We have one more speaker for you, Sandra. She was recommended uh, by one of our previous speakers in the area of positive psychology, which is the science behind happiness, the science and research behind happiness, well-being, and flourishing. She is currently the founder and CEO of Vitae Advisor and the creator of Happy Mondays. Her history is in recruitment firms across Europe and Asia, where she built an incredible amount of money and started her own company, her own recruitment team as a top performer. She got awards. Okay, let's, <clears throat> let's take a breath. Inhale. Exhale. If you're exchanging contact information, please do it outside or silently. Thank you. Back to Sandra. She took a career break in 2015 and that led her to Happy Mondays, to being waking up on Monday feeling happy. <sighs> mm. Let's give a giant round of applause to Sandra. Hello, no pressure on the last one. Um, yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, so, well, what Angela hasn't said is what brought me over here tonight. Um, I was in a networking event for entrepreneurs a few months ago, uh, and there were these beautiful ladies sharing their stories. One of them quit corporate and became like a super famous coach in fitness, and she was making as much money as before, like in a few months. And I was like, okay. The next one was even better. She was like a mommy of two, quit her corporate job, made a business plan, made her friends invest in her project, and she was like one of the top billers in, in, in the new company. And I was pretty much like, okay, so this is what for you guys seems to be an entrepreneur. And I was sitting in that chair thinking like, what? <laughs> That's absolutely not me. Uh, and at that moment, I felt like so embarrassed. I was kind of going down on the chair. I'm thinking, look, I, I shouldn't be an entrepreneur. Um, but I will come to that in a sec. Uh, just briefly my story. So I'm from Spain, as you can probably guess. Um, I studied a, a business administration degree and a master in a strategy. So I always say that I was educated to be the boss. Like, I was meant to be a boss. No one told me, though, that I have to go all the way up. Um, so I finished my master's and I went to London and I was telling my mom, like, don't worry, mom, I'm going to go to London and I'm going to have a very well-paid job um, and I will probably be living in Oxford Circus or Piccadilly Circus, which for those who are not familiar with London, that's like pretty much the city center. And the truth is that this is who I was. Um, I got to London and, oh my gosh, I was a waitress <laughs> in a Spanish restaurant, of course. Uh, and that was very tough. Um, and I didn't want to go back to Spain because <laughs> I was too embarrassed to tell the truth. Um, so I went from being a waitress to a sales job where I had to, it was not basic, so it was all commission based. So I was not only money, I was losing money. And it was like, I need to get out of this. But I was very afraid of reaction again. Um, and eventually I took a job as a recruiter. And I thought, oh, this is it. You know, I was always dreaming with making like happy jobs and recruitment. I thought this is kind of it. Uh, so I got into an interview. I did my best. And they were like, oh, we really, really like you. Come on board. And I was like, ha, thanks. It was my paycheck. And they were like, oh, paycheck? No, you are going to be working for free for three months. And I was like, what? Really? So I made all the way here for this. And I was like, that was pretty much me. Like, no. Uh, three months later, uh, I worked and it worked pretty, pretty hard. And my English was like half of what I can speak right now. So you can imagine. I was on the phone all day, so it was kind of tricky. Um, and after the three months, they were like, the big decision, would you hire me? Just said no. And they were like, no. I was like, what? Um, and it's true. I mean, my learning curve is very slow. So it takes me a long time to be good at something. But when I am, I am. But it takes me a while. So they were like, no, I don't think we want to hire you. I was like, oh. Uh, eventually, my manager pushed, and they did hire me. So for the next two months, this was me. I was like a rock star. Um, as you can see, like I made lots of money. Um, I had a team. I set it up from the scratch, and we were like one of the top builders of the company. So I was like, yeah. I could walk in London. I was wearing like very fancy things, and it was a good thing, a good time. Uh, but what can I say? I get bored kind of easily, um, and everything that goes up goes down again. So. Um, I got an I was thinking, oh, what shall we do next? Uh, my husband heard about an opportunity in London, so or in Singapore. So we thought, oh, let's move to Singapore. Um, and I was in London two years of experience only. Um, and I heard a few offers because in London I was doing pretty well. And I had one offer which was like a consultant role, you know, easy. You are changing country, you are changing company. Just take a normal job. 
It's like, yeah, but I can do better than this. The other job was like, new company, new country, you are gonna set up a team from the scratch and you are gonna become an APAC manager in like two years. I was like, that's the one I want. And my father, I remember, he was like, don't you think it's a bit too much for you? I was like, excuse me? Of course not, I can do that. Uh, and this was me a few months later. I was like, fuck. Uh, so five months later, I literally quit. Uh, the truth is, that I quit, but if I would have stayed a few weeks more, they would have probably let me go. Uh, but I don't say that. <laughs> it took me a while, and it was a very tough decision. And for the next month, this was me. I was like, I had that feeling of going down in a roller coaster that you know, don't know what's going on, and it was very, very scary. Um, I, was, I was kind of asking, like, what's wrong with me? Like, why could I not just be like my friends who make money and are happy? Or like, unhappy, but at least they make money and they think they are happy, right? Why do I really... <laughs> That's the truth. Why do I really want something different? Um, so I went through this phase where I was like, okay, I'm not like the rest of the people, fair enough, so what do I do? Um, and I kind of went through a similar phase, as Kim mentioned. I talked to my friends, who were obviously recruiters, and I was like, hey, I'm looking for something, I don't really know what I want, but I just want to get out of recruitment. And they were like, but you're good in recruitment, why don't you stick to this? I was like, I know, but I don't want this. I was like, so what do you want? I was like, uh, okay, <laughs> Whatever. So then I thought, maybe if a recruiter cannot help, maybe a coach can. And not disrespectful for anybody, but um, I went to a coach and they were way too fluffy. It's like, oh, you know, like find yourself and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, uh, no, not for me. And I look around and my siblings, they are like, you know those lucky, lucky bastards who were born knowing what they were meant to do? So they were like, I was talking to them and they were like, I don't know what you're talking about. And I talked to my lovely husband, who's a very nice guy, and he's like, Honey, I just do whatever makes you happy. And I was like, huh. yeah, and what that is. And so anyway, so it was a very tough time, um, and I didn't know what to do. And I, I decided to take a time off. Um, and the hardest thing for me was, uh, I'm obviously from abroad, um, and I'm a wife. So I was being judged for being an expert wife. And that was killing me. Because it was like, so what did you do for a living? I was like, I just took a career break to figure out what I want to do. And I could see their eyes like, Oh, oh, your husband makes lots of money and that's why you can do this. And I was like, wait, no, it's not true. And the truth is uh, that he was very supportive and thanks to him and my family, I could do the journey that I took. But we had to leave the condo, go to an old apartment where we couldn't even put the aircon because we didn't have the money to pay the bills. Uh, we could not travel. We couldn't do anything for over a year. Uh, just because we had, I had a dream, kind of a dream. But eventually, long story short, uh, while I was unemployed, the good thing is that I had time. So I was talking to a friend who was unemployed, and he was like, can you help me out? I was like, well, I think I can, over a coffee. Um, and suddenly I gave him some tips, which for me obviously was common sense, um, and he got a job. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. And he was like, Sandra, I think you do something well. I was like, do I? She's like, yeah, you have something. I was like, but I haven't invented the wheel. She's like, I know, but there is something that you say that makes sense. I was like, okay. So he was very thankful, obviously, and he was like, why don't you come to my condo? Because obviously I didn't have a condo. Um, and we rent the, uh, the space, and you just run an event there and see what happens. So I was like, okay. So we ran an event, obviously no money, so no marketing. Um, but we just put it on Meetup, and 35 people show up. Um, the event was meant to last for an hour. It, learned, it, it ran for three hours because people never heard what this is about the recruitment, like the recruitment perspective in the job search. And then I was like, Eureka, like it seems to be something that I do well. Uh, so then it was like, everyone was like, you should make a business out of this. And I was like, e yay. And they were like, well, you have the, the degree. Uh, this was me starting my entrepreneur journey. <laughs> you know, like I felt like a baby on mom's shoes. No idea of anything. Yes, I do have the degree, but no. Uh, so pretty much this was me for like many, many months. Like a headless chicken running from one side to the other one. I was asking for help because I had no idea. And uh, some people were telling me like, oh, you know, you need to do A. And I was like, okay, A. And they were like, no, 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 B. I was like, okay, B, 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 B. And I was trying to please everybody. And, and I got lost on the way. And the funniest thing when I was talking to Angela, I was like, my biggest fear was the business plan. It's like, Rrr. do a vision and a mission. Because if you don't have them, you will be a headless chicken. You will be opportunistic and no strategic. I was like, okay, business plan, business plan. So I sat down there. Do you know how many business plans I have? <laughs> 56. <laughs> I literally counted them yesterday. 
and, and none of them is finished. <laughs> um, yeah, I still remember. Um, I realized through all this journey, uh, I didn't know before, but I'm a perfectionist. And I'm too afraid of being judged. Um, I was bullied when I was a child, so I'm like very afraid of what people would think about me. So I realized that the reason why I don't finish the business plans is because I can always say that it's not good, but don't worry, it's on process. So I never finish them. And it went from business plan to blueprint. Maybe they change names, uh, maybe it works. Uh, no, it didn't work. And now it's kind of the uh, business in a nutshell. And I have business in a nutshell here, I had finance here, and it's still not finished. Uh, but that was pretty much me. So I realized also that I needed validation. Uh, and that's a tough thing to say. I need it because I'm not in tech. I don't need millions. Um, and I'm not a cool thing, right? It's just someone. So I was like, I needed validation to know that I was doing something right. So what do all the startups do? Funding. So I thought, oh, I need investors. Because what a better way to know that you're doing something right than having investors, right? I was like, OK, investors. Investors, investors, investors. I, I almost got them. And thanks to what I did, and it was like probably the biggest, biggest, biggest fact up ever. Uh, but the cool thing was that a friend of mine in another uh, fuck up night here a few months ago, he was like, so, because I was like, look, I really need funding. Because every cool startup has funding. So I need funding too. He was like, well, what do you need funding for? I was like, uh, Marketing? I was like, no, like people ask for funding to test. I was like, oh, do they? Okay. And he was like, and you test it and it works, so why do you really need funding? And I was like, oh, all right. Um, so I said no to the funding, and this not to the funding means also saying no to a friend, and it was a tough time. And so this was in January where I was like completely lost, and I was sitting in my, uh, at home. Um, the truth is, it was a Sunday night, and I was close to have an anxiety attack. So my husband took me off home, and we were walking in East Coast Park for like at two in the morning. Because I was saying, like, mate, I didn't want to become an entrepreneur. I became an entrepreneur by accident. I just love what I do, but I have to do so many things that I don't like that it doesn't make any sense. Um, and and he was he said this sentence, which he was like, aha. And he was saying like, you do happy Mondays for every other people. So if you are not happy in your own happy Mondays, how can you make other people? have Happy Mondays. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And so I realized that this is who I am. And, and I set up a business because it makes me happy, because I enjoy what I do, and you know what, I'm the boss. So I set my own rules. Uh, so since I, for the last few months, um, I keep saying, like, I go to work at least four times a week. I take my last client at 7.30 p.m. I don't work on the weekends. And I try to work at home in the morning so I can go for lunch, a lunch break to the pool. Um, this is my life. <laughs> Questions? <laughs> Sorry. Hmm. I remember this photo was from the, the investing. You want to talk about that? Investing? Uh, uh, um, what do you want to talk about investing? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, yeah, so I, that's the, because <laughs> when I realized that I didn't need really, so investors is a choice, and I didn't know I could choose. I just thought that because all entrepreneurs aim to be, to be big and, and create multinationals, like you see Google and Facebook and Uber and all these ones, I kind of felt that I have to, and I never stopped to think whether I wanted to do that. Um, so over Christmas, I was having a talk with my dad, and my dad was saying, like, because I was thinking, do I need investors? And these guys were coming to invest in the company and all these things. And when they was like, what do you need money for? I was like, I don't really know. So my dad was like, if you're having so much trouble, um, maybe it's not the right thing. Um, and I eventually, it's just realizing that you probably, I mean, I don't say that I can do it all on my own. Um, I would probably need investors, but right now it's my choice to go small. And it's my choice to just enjoy life. I could probably make more money, of course. I could probably work longer, yes. But I won't be happy. And it's all about happiness eventually. So why do you need money if you are not happy? Um, so I just chose not to get investors for the time being. But if you have money, like, I'm not happy. Huh? But uh, <laughs> no, in like real investor times.
I did so well, I have no questions whatsoever. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so the question is whether I try to educate myself beyond listening to other people. Um, no. Um, again, I, I became an entrepreneur because I have a very strong vision and I believe that people should have access to this. Um, if I could, I could have a CEO, like literally. I love my job per se. Um, and I just, maybe I'm wrong and maybe as I said, I could be making more money and I could be much more successful. Uh, but I love what I do, and I love the groundwork, like being with my clients. That's what makes me happy, and that's what makes me smile. Uh, so I just put all the boring business part to the side. I just look at it from time to time, and as long as money keeps coming in and is more profitable than loses, I'm okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Um, so, okay, Happy Mondays is something very simple for me. Um, after going through all this process of what do I do with my life and what makes us happy, I just realized that what makes us really happy is much more simple than following your passions or your hobbies and all this kind of thing. Uh, I guess I, I was joking, in the, I had a TEDx event a few weeks ago, and I was saying, like, what happens with your passion is to drink wine and talk to your friends. Like, can you make a living out of that? And so I realized that eventually we are human, and hence being human, um, all we really need, at least in my own opinion, uh, is to feel that we belong, to do something that makes us um, give a sense of contribution, play to our strengths, and cover our needs. So Happy Mondays is just, uh, in a nutshell, to find a job that um, strengthens your inner talents in a company that covers your needs and aligns with your vision and values. Because if you only play to your strengths, happens will happen to me, that you are successful in something that you don't like. If you don't cover your needs, you won't be happy. And if you are not working for something you believe on, you will be bored and burn out soon. So that's Happy Mondays. How you are, uh, like, like, for Singaporean, to Monday is Monday to, so when, when they ask me for a while, how do you have to, like, and for, for me, why is Monday up to, I don't know what Monday is, so let's go to the next one. Uh, I don't, sorry, ask me again the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the, that's the idea. <laughs> um, so I, that was part of my journey. So I initially tried to sell dream jobs, and that was a big mistake. <laughs> People were rolling eyes on me. Um, happy Mondays. I had one of the ladies that I was, I was saying, Mondays are the new Fridays. And she was like, that's because you're not a mom. If you're a mom, you love Mondays. I was like, OK. <laughs> So I couldn't use that tagline. Um, and for Singapore, and to be honest, that's the part of the journey. Um, I set up this company in Singapore because I felt the need in Singapore. Um, however, a big majority of my clients are not Singaporeans. Um, and it's possibly, and it's true, it's because I talk about happiness. And even though I make it very, very simple and down to earth, still people go like, yeah, but that's happiness. And happiness doesn't pay bills. Um, and I keep going like, yeah, 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 yeah. But if you do a job that is based on your talents, you're going to make more money than ever. And that's pretty much where I go. Like my clients come from corporate and stay in corporate. They make more money than ever and they are just happier. They are bankers. They, I don't know, they get paid whatever amount of money, uh, but they just enjoy life. And that's all I do. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned through the process of making 56 business plans that you realized you were a perfectionist. Uh, what's another moment where you realized something about yourself or like a barrier? Uh, <laughs> Um, like realizing that you're a perfectionist, maybe something about the way you tend to do things or the way you approach something that, that shifted. Oh, yeah, well, mm. <laughs> um, I've always been a rebel. I can't say anything about it. Um, so, yeah, I, and everyone, as it was like one of the things, now I'm very close to my family, uh, but I, I always been against everything they were suggesting me to do. So that's why I graduated from Spain, and, and my, everyone was like, oh, find a job in, in, in Spain. I was like, no, I go to London. And they were like, take this job. I was like, no, the opposite. And so that's been my journey. And, and uh, it's funny, though, because uh, when I quit corporate and I went through a personal uh, what do I do with my life process um, and a bit of coaching, um, I realized that the person I was trying to avoid most was my dad, and I was exactly following his steps. And it was the moment of going like, oh, my gosh. 
Um, so yeah, and, and I realized that again, I mean, I'm a rebel, I can't do anything about it, but there is nothing wrong with uh, asking for help. Uh, and there is nothing wrong with just being you. Uh, and sometimes, yeah, is some people just try to help. There is nothing hidden behind. That was my, my head before. <laughs> yeah, kind of. All right. Let's give a round of applause to Sandra.